Really. Good evening. Welcome to the October 22nd, 2019 meeting of Peconic Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the township clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with township policy. Please join me for a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. Amen. Ms. Marsh, please call the roll. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Hurd? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mrs. Russell? Here. Mayor Cole? Here. All right, next on the agenda is presentations, and we have JCPNL Area Manager Robert Flynn. Hey, Robert, are you here to tell us the red tire, our horse is going down? That's <laughs> <laughs> my good news, but we do have good news, so um, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. Uh, again, my name is Bob Flynn uh, with Jersey Central. Just started about six months ago, so I'm fairly new, but I've had some experience with government, both state and federal, for a number of years since I've graduated college. Um, Right now, what I'm doing is kind of making my way to my towns. I have about 30. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Brewer here in uh, one of my first few weeks, but I have most of the towns in Mars County as well as all of Passaic, one town in Essex, one town in Somerset. So uh, primarily I'm out of the boot and line shop, which serves Pequannock up here. Uh, it's our most northern line shop in the eastern portion of the state. Um, and at this point, like I said, I'm kind of just making my way around town to introducing myself. Uh, anyone who gets our outage notifications has probably seen my last name, um, at least for this section of Mars County. Um, right now, also, we have exciting news in terms of uh, what we've done with the Board of Public Utilities. Uh, we've gone to them over the course of this last year for a grant to improve our liability. Uh, it's a plan called the Infrastructure Improvement Plan. We went to them asking for 400 million. Uh, they gave us 97 for, it was 400 million for a four year period. They gave us 97 for one year. So, so let's sure. stop you right there. Sure. So they're giving you the money, but the way they get the money is through us, correct? Our taxes. Correct. No. Utility oh, rates. Yeah. Correct. Utility, Utility rates, rates yeah. to be I consistent with the earlier so conversation. You nobody gave you anything? Correct, yeah. It's it's an investment in our infrastructure. So what it is is a two-phase project. Uh, the first page or the first piece of this is a uh, increased vegetation management. So primarily we always have had the rights for the BPU to trim in our right-of-way, which is basically the section right out of the substation, out to the first section of those three phase. If you ever see the space or cables that's uh -huh. three phase primary uh, in that section we call a lockout zone is if you have an outage or a tree related outage in that section it affects everyone on that whole circuit so that can be sometimes 2,000 3,000 people so that's always been something we've had prior to this BPU has now granted this increased vegetation man uh, management to cover what's called zone two so that's more of the main streets that go along you know county state roads and then Hopefully in the future, when we get, if everything goes to plan, we are able to get more money to do more vegetation management. And the other piece, which I'll explain in a second, uh, you know, we'll be able to go into the tertiary streets, which are you know, dead end streets, you know, streets with lower house numbers uh, than you know, the main thoroughfares through town. So the second piece of this is a device that we're gonna be investing in, which is popular with Florida Power and Light. It's called a trip saver. Um, it's a device that is an automated fuse cutout so if you've ever lost power and looked up at the lines, you've seen the fuse yep. in the drop down position. The normal procedure after that is we will dispatch a troubleshooter. Yep, he'll inspect the whole circuit. He'll find where the fault is and then fix the repairs, whatever needs to be done, remove the tree, pop that fuse back into place and everyone's restored. 
this device is automated and communicates with our dispatch center to notify us uh, that there is a fault on the line, and whether that's a tree limb, mylar balloons, an umbrella, whatever it ends up being that causes the fault, right? If that fault clears, this device will pop itself back into place and will try a numerous amount of times to close itself, essentially saving the trip of the troubleshooter. So we're going to be putting these in strategic locations. We have in our Marstown office, our headquarters there, we have reliability engineers who have compiled a list in each of our towns of where the problem circuits, where are we constantly having tree-related outages, whether it's just a branch. Obviously, if a whole tree comes down, it's a big, you know, it's a big job, but a regular branch can sometimes end up being a two or three hour outage because we're inspecting the full length of that circuit before we put the fuse back. So this device and this IIP work, as I mentioned, will be completed, we hope, by the end of 2020. It may run over a month or two after that. Um, and then at that point, we're going to go back to the BPU. Hopefully our reliability numbers have improved at that point. We're able to further expand upon the vegetation management as well as purchase more of some of these trip savers. So um, as that completes in town here and the other 30 towns that I have, I'm going to be kind of doing another round and being able to, I think, give you specific locations of where these trip savers are. Um, frankly, you probably could see them if you ever see them on the street because they're quite large comparatively to a regular fuse, which is just cylindrical and rather small. So um, again, so good, exciting news on Jersey Central's front, and uh, hopefully this will be improving reliability and keeping our customers happy up here in town. So um, last piece I'll mention fun part of the job. Uh, if there's things in town, please include me. JCPNL does sponsorships for things like 5Ks or if there's a special day that happens in town or festival. Um, we do have a budget that we are able to support our towns with, so please keep... a sewer project. No. <laughs> <laughs> la la last, year, last year, Jersey Central Power and Light did sponsor a recreation activity, so there was yes. yeah. sponsorship. We could have a sewer fair. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, did the BPU uh, establish your rate for next year yet? Electric rate? Or? Uh, uh, I, I don't know, to be honest. I can check. I, it's not something that I've been emailed yet, but we're, again, me and the three other new external affairs hires are within five or six months, so it's just right now kind of getting in front of each town. So. Watch your rates, too. So. Yeah. Yep. The more money you got. And, and just for the benefit of the council's uh, understanding, prior to 2010-11, there were area managers that had many, 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 many more towns, right. and then we had a spate of really bad weather and major Same. disasters. Oh, yes. And, and Snowtober was pretty nasty, yeah, too. Snowtober. And uh, Jersey Central understood that, you know, the bog down, that having 200 towns for one individual was problematic. So they've increased the number of people to be more responsive. And really, my primary point of contact is Bob and, and his is me. And that's how, right. if you recall the email about the outage, he sent that out. We let you guys know. And that way, yep. at least there's active communication right. when, when things come up. Yeah, so I thank you for that. And absolutely. I appreciate your yeah, as well. And that'll continue. That's like a crucial part of my job is to be the liaison between you know yourself if there's no am coordinator the mayor whoever takes that responsibility it's you for most of the time right now um, you know we'll keep in contact and then if there's issues in terms of specific outages that are affecting large amounts of customers that you hear we do have foreman and um, you know relationships internally as well to get you information and you know during storms we do a lot of work in terms of prioritizing what's important for Paquanic. you give me you know your list of three things that say I need this immediately that's where kind of the relationship is tested but it comes to be a benefit because you can't dispatch crews on a regular you know sunny day that sort of stuff but during storms it's a good avenue to have you know a liaison with the company as well as with each of the towns so that's it for me unless there's questions but um, look forward to working with all of you thank you thank you thanks Bob nice meeting you as well can we need cards yes Thank you. Yep. That was all passed out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ran out of cards. No, I got it. Oh. <laughs> oh, Even as a show mode. Even as yeah. a show mode. Oh, good. I'll text you later. <laughs> 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 I always have my phone on. So. Thank you. I'll leave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. What? Have a good evening, Bob. Thank you very much. All right. At this time, are there any reports uh, from volunteers serving our community? Bathroom Frank?
Okay. Next on the agenda is public comment. This public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period of public comment is reserved for later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions or comments to three minutes, but you know, being that we have such a big crowd, I'll take six minutes. <laughs> if anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized and come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. No one? Yeah, nothing. All righty then. Okay, so next on the agenda is the manager's report, Mr. Brewer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Obviously, the first item on my memo is meeting Mr. Flynn, which we just had the opportunity to do. Uh, next thing I just want to bring to the council and the public's attention, there are resolutions scheduled for the council's consideration this evening to join the New Jersey Municipal Employee Benefits Fund. The township is a partially self-insured entity for health insurance, and the rates and the loss experience has been such that we've seen 25% increases over the last five years, 25 percent, an increase of 25 percent over the last five years. So this is a move to join a larger pool, but remain in a similar dynamic. Uh, they've uh, the North Jersey Municipal Employee Benefits Fund has experienced an eight percent increase over the same time period, going from 2019 or 18 to 19. There was actually a reduction. So uh, we're going to be joining approximately 26 other communities, uh, much like the Joint Insurance Fund for property casualty and liability insurance this will be for health and dental insurance the term of uh, membership is for three years uh, included in your packet is the resolution authorizing that as well as uh, the producers agreement with the, uh, the the people who will be servicing the account the indemnity agreement and the fund philosophy uh, moving on to the next item, also a resolution scheduled for the schedule for the council's consideration. Previously, there was a conversation about an agreement with the city of Newark regarding a water sampling station on Mountain Avenue. The city of Newark has returned that agreement executed. Um, when it was originally discussed, there were costs associated with electricity. That cost has been removed because the city has gotten their own electric service. So the only costs that the township will be incurring and therefore charging back to Newark are associated with sewer. Bottom line is the city is using a sampling station in real time to sample the water coming from the Pequannock plant in West Milford, and whatever they sample will come in real time. It will be a regular flow. We'll go into the sewers. Uh, at prior council meetings, there was conversations regarding uh, shade tree ordinance. Uh, the shade tree commission recommended that an ordinance be established to create licensing or registration, rather, with the township uh, if people have complied with the state requirements to be designated as a tree expert or a licensed tree care operator. Uh, they would have to come and get a decal. Through reviewing matters with staff, there had been previous recommendations of the Shade Tree Commission regarding what species of trees should be planted in the right of way, as well as how our code is approached to avoid confusion. So a draft ordinance was provided to the Shade Tree Commission for their review, and I'm awaiting a response prior to bringing it back to the council to make sure it's acceptable with what they're envisioning. Next item, 2019 paving. There are three areas that are still outstanding with respect to paving. Uh, the first was Hillview School. That was added by an interlocal agreement. Uh, two-thirds of the cost was ours because the two-thirds of the property is ours, one-third is the Board of Education's. Uh, the Mountain Avenue, Upper Mountain Avenue area, where the gas utility surprised us this year with the fact that they were putting in a gas main, so at least they let us know before we paved that so they didn't dig up our new road. And there is an, a 400-foot section of Cutlass Road. Cutlass Road is the frontage to Cedar Crest, and it's a portion of the property that I believe was annexed when the Cedar Crest development came through. Um, Riverdale paved their portion. We're expecting DOT to pave that intersection, hopefully at some point. But there's 400 feet that nobody paved, and nobody told us they were paving. We tried to ask the state if they would do it in a change order and allow us to pay the money. We asked the state's contractor if we could do it to try to save on mobilization costs. That bore no fruit. So we have those three areas that were originally anticipated to be done in October. Fortunately, the contractor is not available. Presently, it's scheduled for the last week in November. All parties have been notified. We're meeting with the contractor at the end of the week to try to get it moved up as quickly as possible, but I just wanted to share that information with the council. Uh, and lastly, uh, master plan. The master plan steering committee met last Wednesday, October 17th. 
the schedule was decided, which has now been amended since this memo was produced. The uh, open house meeting to discuss the summary of findings based upon feedback from the community is now on November 6th at 7.30 p.m. in the senior house. There is a notification up on the township's website about that with a flyer associated with it. And we're working to try to get the draft plan out to the community as quickly as possible. So following that meeting, we're going to work to do that. So that will be in front of the planning board December 2nd? December 9th. 9th is there's, a special meeting. There's, a, there's a special meeting December 9th that will be the public hearing and first opportunity for potential adoption. Or it'll go into the next meeting. December. Correct. That's the first opportunity. So if it's not adopted for some reason, it could be adopted uh, on the 16th, which is the next notice meeting of the planning board. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, conversations could be had. Will we be able to regulate how much water is actually going through the sewer? For this? No, what we did was I had the water and sewer engineer review the schematics for the station to determine what the flow would be based upon the design, and that's how the, the fee was set. They haven't connected yet to the sewer. Correct. No, so they haven't. No. They haven't do they know they have to do it by January 1st, or it goes up? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would imagine they're not going to connect until they build whatever they're building. I, I think they're in the process of building. Oh, yeah. They, they want to get this up as quickly as possible because of their compliance issues. Huh. Okay. Um, Thank you, uh, Mayor and members of Council. Um, uh, with, with the paving, Yes. It, we thought the contractor was going to do it the end of October, but he thought he had to do it in end of November? The original schedule was to have him in the end of October, and then that was revised based upon the contractor's availability. Some of his jobs probably ran long. Ran, right. right, so he right, came right. back and said he the, could. The challenge is we're using a contractor through the Mars County Co-op, and it, absent that, yeah, we would have to go out to bid. Yeah. So we would add cost and time and other issues. So okay. we're, we're relying so upon we're, the contractor from the Mars County Co-op. So he can just say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it next year? Well, no, he could say I'm going to do it this year, but if we get into December, yeah, which is the, the, the mills close, and we may say we don't want payment. We may with say additives. forget it then, and yeah. we can do that. We can say Correct. no, we're not. Okay. Correct. We we did that from in 2018 into 19 with the sidewalk project, which I think turned out much better for waiting for it. So. Right. Yeah. Because once it gets cold, it really doesn't come out good. Correct. <laughs> There's an additive yeah. in asphalt that's exactly. not a good thing. Exactly. And it's I, you know, I'd rather maybe. Think right. about pushing that off till spring. If the weather works, the weather works. If the weather doesn't, we'll make that decision and I'll notify council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, next are public hearings, and we have another public hearing scheduled for this evening. And then we have ordinances for in introduction, and we do not have any ordinances for introduction at this time. Next on the agenda is resolutions. Ms. Marsh. Beginning with resolution R-2019-209, authorizing membership in the North Jersey Municipal Employee Benefits Fund. 2019-210, appointing producers of certain consulting field and market marketing service related to the North Jersey Municipal Employee Benefits Fund. 2019-211, authorizing an interlocal service agreement between the Township of Aquanic and the City of Newark Department of Water and Sewer Utilities for the provision of sanitary sewer service at Newark's water sampling station. And there was a revision, a typo that was fixed and distributed. R-2019-212, canceling unexpended general capital appropriation balances. 2019-213, canceling unexpended, unexpended water capital appropriation balances. 2019-214, authorizing cancellation of outstanding checks. 215, authorizing the cancellation of reserve for accrued leave trust fund. R-2019-216, canceling unexpended sewer capital appropriation balances. R-2019-217, authorizing tax office refunds, overpayments, or cancellations. 2019-218, authorizing release of designated escrow deposits. R-2019-219, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the October 17, 2019 bill list and 2015 and 2016 FEMA elevation escrow lists. And R-2019-220, canceling sewer assessment balances for Anello Brothers, Inc. Are there any comments on the resolutions from council? Yes, truly. All this cancellation of this stuff puts more money back into the general fund. Not necessarily. Yes, please. Come on up. Um, 
some of the uh, the balances that are being canceled are just debt that has not been taken out. So it really just reduces the amount of debt that we're able to take out. The money was never spent and it was never issued. So it's really just a wash, a lot of it. Um, except general capital, where it just goes back to where it was originally funded from, whether it was capital improvement fund, capital fund balance, it just goes back to where it actually came from. A lot of the general capital was funded in cash. So we didn't gain anything, we didn't lose anything. Yes. Hmm. In short, yes. Well, in general capital, yeah. You gave yourself the ability to do other things with them. Take out more debt. <laughs> no, general capital, no, you're, you're good on that one. But, okay. um, Just utilities. Mm. Thank you, Drew. Any other comments from council? Is there, is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll make a motion to adopt R-2019-209 through R-2019-220. Is there a second? I'll no. second. So roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mayor Cole? Yes. Next on the agenda is items for discussion, PV Park. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bear one minute for me to flip through my documents. Uh, based upon prior conversation, there were some questions that council wanted followed up upon as well as uh, additional analysis prepared. So one of the questions was about the actual money that would have been saved had the days prior to the opening of the season right. and the uh, school year letting out. And the actual days in 2019, the cost that would have been saved had the park not been opened equal $2,729.97. That was lower than what it would be if it were open all the time because of cancellations due to weather and other things. A projected cost for full operations, which really would have just saved the cost associated with the lifeguards and the gate guards, as was pointed out previously, would be approximately $4,000. Um, from a comparison rates, there was a question regarding where we fell with respect to rates of neighboring lake and other recreational facilities. Uh, a list was provided along with the memorandum. Somewhat challenging to compare exact rates because you have you know, a different approach to rate structures. You have a different amount of days that are open in, in an effort to avoid a, a multivariate ANOVA or regression analysis from a statistical perspective. We're, we're towards the bottom of the list in terms of what our rate structure is. So based upon prior direction, uh, there was a fee adjustment analyzed and a 10% increase in fees associated with uh, memberships would result in approximately $7,844 if the 2019 numbers remain the same. Uh, similarly, if the for-profit rate for camp use went from $3 per camper per day to $6 per camper per day would result in a total uh, additional revenue of $9,291. Those two numbers together equal about $17,000. So let me ask a question. How much money did it cost us last year? The park ran at a deficit of approximately $39,000. 39000 We got to lift the rates more than that. So this would, re well, again, this was a, this is assuming all things being equal. This would, right. this would reduce that deficit to approximately $20,000. I thought we talked about raising it $10, not 10%. We could do the $10. The problem with $10 is it, it disproportionately affects different rates. So if you have a $40 rate for a senior citizen per year and you raise it $10, that's one thing versus an $80 rate. So, I mean, whatever the council's privilege is, I'm happy to prepare we, we can't rates to that effect. Right, so We're if we raise it 40, then we, we go to 50, we raise it, you know. Oh, I see what you did here. And then yeah. we, you know, 80 to 90, like if we, why could, I don't understand why we couldn't do $10. We, we, you can, the council can, we can do whatever we want, um, but for, my understanding was a 10%, and if I understood it incorrectly, I apologize, but that's what a 10% will result. If we want to do $10, it's a little bit greater than 10%, so it would be, I don't know, $12,000, $13,000 yeah. more in revenue, rough estimate. It's still going to cost us money to run that point. But, you know, it always does. But, but it always that, does. That's well. fine. I have no yeah. problem, you know, yeah. using money to raise the park, because I, I do think it helps everybody, even those who don't go to the park. It, it's a selling value in your For home, whether you go or not. Um, I think raising it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit every year will get us to where we need to be. Yeah, but, and $10, think, think about it, it's $10 for three months. 
for how many days, you're basically raising it three dollars a month. Yeah, but I, I do understand what Adam's saying. If it's ten dollars on forty as opposed to ten dollars on one hundred and twenty, I think you were just 10%. trying to make it fair at ten percent. So maybe we should just go fifteen percent. Like, if you want to use a percentage, whatever the council wants to do, I'm happy to you know, have an ordinance prepared. I know when the seniors change. came up, that usually go. That's what they had said. We don't have a problem paying, paying an extra ten dollars. Right. It's it's not a lot. Right. Well, what's the percentage for ten dollars on seniors, and then work from there. <laughs> A 10% increase on a senior 20, rate is $4. Yeah, 22%. <laughs> well, that would be 22%. <laughs> <laughs> that would be 22%. Yeah. It's right up there by the sewer rates. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's not I, I try to approach things with some element of parity, but whatever the council wants to do. Yeah, you have to do a percentage for Yeah, you do. You, because it's not you want to do 15%? Yeah. 15% um, sounds good to me. Is yeah. there anything in here where it would come up to what the fees are going to be? No, I just did the bottom lines. Oh. No, but you could yeah. easily take 50% of this. I know. 50, that might make more sense, just do 15%. Increase. I, th I think we're going yeah, to so take then, a number. So then, just looking at the residents, so ages 2 to 17 would go up, what, 450, so then you can go into dollars and cents, and then the resident would, 8, 9, would be go up 12, and then... So I don't think you'd make as much money. I think we're going to have to be increasing it X percent year over year until we get at par. So maybe 10% a year for the next three years. We just said Four 15. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely not 10. It would have to be at least 15. But 15 will generate, let's say, 12K. Instead of the seventy-eight forty-four, we're still short. Well, yeah, well we're, we're also we sending. Can. We're also going to try to send the. We lost money on the snack stand, so if we send that out to bid and that becomes money in, that kind of closes yeah. that little yeah. gap too. You know, I'm not. In, I'm not impressively optimistic. Yeah, about I was that. just going to say. I just want to share that current fear. Really? Well, yeah. I think that would be such a good <laughs> idea for somebody. I, I would love it, I but I'm just. Bob can kind of put I, wanna, <laughs> no. I, no. I want to share my, my, my conservative what approach to what that. Is I wouldn't the think reason that we don't think that could work? Is it's it's a, too small of a job. We tried it one I know. Time yeah. we got but nothing. that's what it is, too small of it's, a job. It's too small. It's too unpredictable. The weather has a huge impact. If you have a really warm summer with great weather, you can make a lot of money. The opposite, you lose a lot of money. It's a, it's a risky proposition. I think we have to go up, say, 15%, and then we have to revisit it because I want to see if we have any attrition. Are people not going to go? You know, we have to figure that out, too. Why would they not? So why don't you put a raise? Well, like a 15%. Yeah. Yeah. If you continue well, to raise it, raise, 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 raise it, you may knock some people out. But we're, we're, but we're down from... We are down from five, six, seven, eight years ago. We are less than what we charged when was my kids on swim team ten years ago. But all our costs went up. Yes, yeah. I know there was a time we lowered it to try to get people back after the water was bad. But our water's beautiful. The place is beautiful. We got the umbrellas. We're doing stuff. They're looking to do stuff. So I, I don't think an extra ten dollars or fifteen dollars is going to stop somebody from joining. No, but the people we have go sewers, go we have that. insurance. It, all the costs are going to be going up pretty decent this oh. year for everybody. Yeah, so. only those who have sewer. Only yeah, but still across the town. There's going to be increases this year. Well, I think this one is too cheap. We had many people come in and say, we don't mind an increase. Uh, we we have increase it. Well, they have yeah. got to <laughs> And those are the people who come to us and, and care about, you know, they're the share first person thoughts. to come. Yes, they share their thoughts with us quite often. And they were honest in saying they have no problem. So what am I hearing from council? 10%, 15%, a dollar amount? I'd say 15%. Fifteen percent rounded up to whole numbers. Yeah, you can't. I'm not coming to change. I don't do pennies. Finance officers do pennies. Managers do whole numbers. Okay, I'll prepare an ordinance accordingly for the council's consideration. Yeah. Well, can before you do that, can you send out the information? Yeah. Can you can you do that because I. I'm not too good with numbers in much. The challenge is absent a meeting, the council can't give me direction. So it's whether I send it to you or not, we can't do anything until the next right. meeting. Right. 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 I just want to know what it looks like. Group, uh, increase sure. in the, um, 
Okay, is that it? Mm -hmm. And my understanding of the increase six. for the it's per six. camper per day rate is from three dollars per camper per day to six dollars per camper per day. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. I think I think they, they could have gone a little higher on that. They already they already sent out their <laughs> but that's they already it. sent out their stuff. By the yeah. way. <laughs> I would have done seven. Right. Seven is lucky. Well, they did. They, they're charging, what was it, $29 family sign-up fee per week plus another 20 is that Is that per week? Yes. Uh, Unless they only make them do it once. Yeah, I think that's a one time. Well, maybe fee. once, yeah. but most people do maybe two or three weeks. Most of the people that I know that send their kids there, they don't do every single oh. week for the summer. So, so are, are we moving off the number previously prepared? No, no we can't. No, that's fine. Okay. So keep that. This is 15 for the orange. Okay. All right. Round up. Okay. Any other com conversation about PV Park? Uh, there are no reports or notices. Oh, just to, I'm sorry. Back to PV Park, just to clarify. The days that are closed. So are we're not, we we're not the, closing. We're, we're not, not going to. No, we, we can't raise a 15 percent and then, and then close. We're closed. I mean, so then we're we just only looking at saved three thousand. I, I do think they have to go back to. I don't think you need five lifeguards on when there's one person in the water. And then they tell us at the same respect they only have one lifeguard for 150 <clears throat> campers. Logically speaking, that does not make sense. Okay, but I'm just clarifying that we're going to keep open the same yes, amount yes. of days the we did last year. Yeah. But we're yeah. going to it wasn't that much. It was like from. Yeah, it was only three thousand bucks. Right. That's what I said. Right. Yeah. It's not there. Yeah. All right. We're good. PV Park. There are no Thank reports you. or notices. Next on the agenda is council reports and announcements. Councilwoman Florence Lynch. I really don't have anything except that Economic Development Committee is meeting this week at 7.30 on uh, tomorrow night here in this room. So if you'd like to join us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it? Yes. Thank you. Councilman Hurd. Thank you. Uh, Paquanic Township Coalition, I want to give you guys these. Pass mm -hmm. it down. Do I get to pick the color? You can. That's why I got new colors for you. Is yes. that like a wine bag? No, <laughs> it is a... <laughs> Instead of using plastic straws or any other kind of straw, now you have a metal straw. So you're helping the environment. Oh, it's a metal straw. Yes, it's a wonderful thing. How do you clean it? Uh, there's actually a little uh, pipe cleaner. There's a doohickey in there. And you clean it. My kids love it. That kind of freaks me out. So that was very yeah, interesting. Uh, the next Municipal Alliance or T Paquanic Township Coalition meeting is going to be on November 13th. Uh, they're all at the library now, and I encourage everybody to bring a friend because we'd like to have more people there. Let's see. Uh, they're also talking, for the high school, they're talking about uh, bringing back the uh, DWI car crash, the kid DWI car crash. So they are working with that because uh, AAA does have a program that can sponsor that. That would be very interesting. Uh, as well as parents that host lose the most, they want to get that back out there. And the CARS program, which is part of the church across the street, mm -hmm. very interesting. This is just an interesting point that I found out, is that uh, unfortunately there was a kid that was Narcan by our police six times, and we have brought him back. He's gone through the CARS program, he's doing great, and he's sticking to it. So again, that just goes to prove that a, the Narcam is working, B, the programs that we have in town are working, and you know we have somebody that's actually sticking to it, and as of uh, last call, he's kicking it. So fingers crossed, let's keep it going. Other than that, that is all I have. Thank you. Let me know if you need a car. I might be able to get you a, a crash car. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Fallon? A um, couple of questions for the township manager. Is it possible our volunteer fire company and first aid members can get free entrance to PV Park? They were not too happy about finding out that they're getting their uh, clothing allowance tax. That's a policy decision for the township council. I, 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 don't I don't have, have a problem, problem with, with that. that. Yeah, I don't either. Just, just the volunteer. Yeah. Fire company. I was going to say that because they put fire a lot company of time. Wanted to and first first squad, they squad. put a lot of time into. I agree. Um, that's number one. Number two, is there any kind of tax rebate that uh, on their property tax that they could get instead of getting a uh, uh, clothing allowance? Nothing that I'm presently aware of. Could you research that to see yeah, if there, there is? There is none, Rich. We there is none. Okay. Yeah. 
Rich, do they all have an ID card or something that they can show at the gate? To get I in? believe they do. Well, what, what I would recommend, um, having done this in other municipalities, what I would recommend is that they would come and actually register with Parks and Recreation, right. become yeah. a member, and it's just without fee. So the ordinance that associated with fee would be, it would have that in it. There would be language that would articulate how they would have to qualify in the process they would take. Okay. All right. Just like well, if, that's, if that's the consensus council, no it problem. Is. When yeah. I prepare the, the ordinance with respect to the rate change. Mm -hmm. Do we know how many people that were members last year? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, they, I the, do think the, they have to be active members. Right. Well, of course, they have to be active and the chief and, uh, would uh, verify that they're active and right. they're meeting their quota of 60%. Right. That's what I'm saying. They need to meet their quota. Right. I, you know, again, I don't think that many people are going to use it, but I think it's a good gesture. I think it's a good will yeah, gesture. Absolutely. Um, there was no planning board meeting, um, and that's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilwoman You're Russell. Welcome. I The <laughs> library meeting was canceled. Um, people could not make it. It'll be scheduled for 1030 right now, hopefully, <coughs> October 30th. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, I'm just checking my calendar real quick. Uh, other than the... Uh, we did a couple ribbon cuttings, uh, accentuate with love down at 60 Nork Pumpton Turnpike on the 12th, and then this last Saturday, uh, Melissa and I, Councilwoman Florence Lynch, were at the Chase Bank. Uh, they had a pretty good showing of uh, employees and family members, so we did the grand opening there. And other than that, uh, I don't have anything else myself. So. Rich, is the beef steak this Friday? Saturday. It is this Saturday. 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 I keep saying this Saturday. In Bloomingdale. In Bloomingdale. It's the same place we went last year. Yes. Yep. Did you put it in the tickets already? Yeah, I'm going to go. Rich, did you tell him to hold me a ticket? Or uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. No, yeah. I'll, I'll pay for it when I get there. That's fine. Okay, I have a direct Cause, long cause, long cause long last, long last time you took my ticket and you put it in and you won the prize and kept it. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> but he paid, but he paid for my ticket. <laughs> Do you just need one ticket or two? Just one? Just one. Okay. Just one. Okay. 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 I got to come. Make sure you. Okay, thank you. I'll pay you when I get there. You sure you want me to pay for it? I want mine for Quantigopoly. Okay. But I did come I over and play. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Kyle, you good? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Next on the agenda is public comment. Anyone want to wish to address the council? Come on up. Address your name and a record for the record. My name is Peter Schmidt, uh, Manor Avenue 16. Um, just listening to that, I think people don't, don't understand how much things cost. If they would know how much it costs to clean the water, yeah, to keep the area safe, maybe they would be more amendable to higher rates. That's one, one thought, one thing. Number two, my, my library membership is free. Uh, so one is free and the other one costs money. Yeah? Uh, there is an imbalance. Uh, third item, very, very brief. Uh, I think the volunteers are underrated. I think they, they should get more support. Maybe in a street fair, one can have a cookie jar and all the population can show their appreciation. That yeah? doesn't have to be the municipality. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Julie, you're a resident. You want to say anything? <laughs> no? Come on, Julie. <laughs> uh, okay, there are no minutes for approval. Uh, there's no closed session? No closed session. Session. No. session. No. All right. Well, being no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?